Our second generation Starlink failed for the first time in three years of owning it. So we have our generation three that they just sent us right here. Let's set it up. We ordered a replacement mount because the generation three mount is different for a roof, but we'll get to that later. The packaging for this is so much more simple compared to the generation two. It's much smaller. Okay, here's Dishy 3.0. It's actually a larger dish than last time in terms of surface area. That's pretty cool. And it has this built-in mount for it. Here's the size comparison between the two dishes. You can see that generation three is a little bit bigger. As always, they got their nifty little graphics here. And what's cool about this one is the router has a built-in ethernet port. So you don't have to buy the adapter and it has a separate power supply. So I guess you can tuck that away a little bit further if you want to. I was wrong. So looking at the router, this is actually the connection to the dish under here. There's two networking ports. So that one says uh, to Mars and beyond on the inside. This one says made on earth by humans. And that one shows like a, maybe a Falcon 9 or a super heavy. I can't even tell. Pretty cool though, the two networking ports on the single router. That's awesome. Okay, let's check out the fitment of the bracket for the roof. So it looks like this one is just a tiny bit more complicated than last generation's pole, but it looks pretty simple and straightforward. What's interesting about the third generation Starlink is the array is obviously bigger, but on the second generation, it was able to twist, it was able to rotate and tilt to find uh, the correct area. I guess now they've changed it so that basically any patch of sky you get is gonna be a good patch. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it compares to the last generation. It looks like to just change out the mount, it's friction fit into there. So you just give it a, a pull out and there's that bracket out. For the new bracket I ordered, it looks like this is just gonna be a friction fit and clip into there. And then same deal, snaps in really nice. Actually, that's really nice and secure. That's a cool design. So when it's up on the roof, I'll have my bracket uh, bolted to the eave and then the Starlink will be able to go in here and I'll be able to tighten it down using that screw right there. So before I take it up on the roof and set it up, I think I'm gonna do a quick and dirty setup just on the deck and make sure everything's working and good to go. Okay, so here's my temporary setup. Dish is out there in a terrible spot. We'll see how it does. And here I have the router and the power supply plugged in. So let's power it up and we'll check it on the Starlink app. So I connected to the router on Wi-Fi here and I'm gonna open up the Starlink app for the first time. And it looks like it's doing some business. It's calculating orientation. It's probably gonna have a terrible spot where I placed it, but we'll give it a minute and see what happens. Okay, so it finally came online about five minutes later. Looks like it can realign, but I'll worry about that when it's up on the roof. Pretty good. Now I did name the router and create a password. Let's give it a speed test just in its shitty spot. Oh wow, okay. <laughs> so this is already better than our previous one with a much better view of the sky. So this dish is, is pretty unreal. Okay, now that I know that the ground test is working properly, I'm gonna go up, take off the old bracket, the old cable, and I'll start running the new stuff. So up on the roof of the tiny home, I've got the wire torn off the wall. You can see it's a different cable than the new one. And here is our old bracket on the edge of the house. So I'm gonna take that off and put on the new bracket. So the new cable is fed through the wall there. I'm running it up and it's gonna go to the existing spot on that corner. Okay, with the new bracket on, I made sure to feed the cable through where it needs to go. I've got this temporarily sitting here until I grab the Starlink. I'll plop it on, secure the cable to the wall, and we'll give her a test. Okay, so I got the dish up here. I'm going to plug her in. I put this little tape on to protect the connector. So I was pushing it through the wall. And I plug it in here. First, I'm going to slide into place like this clicked in nicely done so from our previous starlink i know that that way was north and that was the way it liked it so i'm going to get it generally 
positioned in that direction and then I can adjust the orientation afterwards. It does seem different not having the motors on there to automatically orient itself. Now you have to manually orient. It's probably just a cost savings thing, but it is definitely different. Okay, this is pretty cool. I just powered it on just to check alignment. I went over to alignment. Look how perfect that is. I was on it to the exact degree just by guessing. That's pretty sick. Other than that, it's working pretty well. It just booted up in the past two minutes and everything seems to be working. You can see it's already collecting data for obstructions. So I'll jump off the roof. Everything's tightened down and we should be good to go and we can start testing it. On our home, this is the best place for now for the setup for the view of the sky, but I am thinking about moving it later, maybe up, up onto a pole mount or something like that. Just because we do get four feet of snow, I recently shoveled the roof off and we had three and a half feet of snow on top. So it does obstruct it a little bit unless I use my roof rake, but I don't know, I may change it in the future. So I keep our Wi-Fi set up above the fridge all the way up here. If we go and check this out. So there I have the router coming through the wall with the cables. And I also have our own switch there, which allows us to run uh, a local area network from the router there. So let's test it out and see if Gen 3 is better. To be fair, we're gonna run one test now and one test 24 hours from now. That way the dish has time to figure its stuff out and it might perform better, so we'll account for that. This dish has only been set up for about 10 minutes now, so you can see it has a very limited view of the sky. And so we'll know later in about 24 hours how well that did. We're gonna run an advanced test, that way we can see specifically from the router to the internet the speed. And even just 10 minutes right off the bat, you can see it has a really good connection to the internet that is quite high. I know a lot of people can get even higher numbers, but it's not really about that. It's more about the stability of your network to the internet. The router speed from my phone to the router is super high. I'm really impressed with the Wi-Fi 6 on this router. And with a quick look at the statistics, I can tell you that compared to Gen 2, I'm already impressed with how well it connects to the internet right off the bat after being booted up. It's 24 hours later, so let's give it a more accurate test. Oh, also make sure you give this video a like and subscribe. So based on how well it performed in those first 10 minutes, I'm not expecting a big change, but you can see that it's had time to check for obstructions in its line of sight of the sky, and it's in a pretty decent uh, space. That little bit of red is not an issue. Right now, this is about the middle of the day, so this is when a lot of people are on the network, a lot of people using satellites and the ground stations, so we can't really get a super accurate reading, but you can see this is performing a little bit less than uh, our first test 10 minutes in, if I were to do this in the middle of the night, maybe 3 a.m., I would see really good numbers because there's less people on the network. But I would say this is pretty fair for how it's doing. So is Gen 3 faster than Gen 2 in terms of performance? I would say it's pretty comparable, if not the exact same in terms of dish performance. It's hard for me to get a good reading because I don't have a controlled setting for this. Now, in terms of router performance, I would say it's much faster. The Wi-Fi 6 on board of the router was actually noticeable to me streaming from my local server over to my TV. I actually noticed a streaming difference in speed. It was actually really awesome. Here are a couple takeaways from going from Gen 2 to Gen 3. The manual orientation is a lot different without that onboard motor to change or reset itself now and then. I think it'll actually allow for less downtime if your power goes out and you have to reset. On Gen 2, it would reset the motor, find its orientation, and that would take time. I think now with this manual orientation, it's a little bit faster. It is a little bit more fussy for people who may not know uh, how this works or what they're doing, but once you set it, you kind of forget it. The networking on the router itself is a big bonus. We purchased the adapter for our Gen 2 router, and that meant that we had to shell out some extra cash just to be able to connect Ethernet. So that the fact that they, excuse me, included it into this router, I can't speak right now. The fact they included it into this router is a big bonus. If I had a working Gen 2, would it be worth it to go to a Gen 3? 
I don't think that I would do that. The reason we moved over is because our Gen 2 dish actually died. So we just moved over anyways. They took our old Gen 2 and they sent us a new Gen 3. And I have to say props to Starlink support. I've only had to contact them maybe two or three times and every single time they resolve it. Lots of people I've talked to who have the service say that if any problem was happening, Starlink resolves it by either sending them a new unit free of charge or anything. So I really have to put props out there to Starlink support. Here are a couple frequently asked questions from my other videos that I thought I would put here because I still get those questions to this day. A lot of people ask about weather and if it affects Starlink. It can sometimes, Starlink melts the snow on your dish to allow for it to always be able to be in connection. But when there's heavy rains or a heavy snowfall happening like a storm, the latency does increase and it has a harder time connecting with servers or the internet. In terms of online gaming, I get this question a ton. If Starlink is good enough for online gaming? And the answer is absolutely yes. I play tons of games with my friends online. We'll be on Discord and gaming at the same time while Logan is on Netflix or on her computer and it handles it absolutely no problem. I never notice a latency problem with it. And I used to game on my cellular network before we could get Starlink and it was horrible. So I thought I'd just put that out there. Drop me a comment if you have any questions about anything I shared here or maybe something I didn't get around to. Also give this video a like, I'd really appreciate it. And hopefully I earned your subscription. Until next video, I'll see you later.